Request for a recorded vote on amendment number 15, printed in House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. Blumenauer, which further proceedings were postponed and on which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number 15, printed in House Report number 113-170, offered by Mr. Blumenauer of Oregon. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in favor of request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. Sufficient number having arisen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This is a two-minute vote. This amendment w would reduce funding for Ohio-class nuclear submarines by 10 percent. The chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Dianne Feinstein, issued a joint statement with the top Republican on the committee, Saxby Chambliss, today, calling a House amendment that seeks to reduce funding for national security agency surveillance programs unwise, referring to an amendment offered by Representative Justin Amash. Part of the statement says, the FISA business records program has contributed to disrupting numerous terrorist attacks against our nation. We believe this debate in the Congressional Intelligence and Judiciary Committees should continue and that any amendments to defund the program on appropriations would be unwise. A Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon spoke today about the necessity of reforming surveillance laws, and we covered his remarks, which you can see after the House goes out tonight or anytime at cspan.org. On this vote, the yeas are 49, the nays are 372, and the amendment's not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on amendment number 17, printed a House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Nugent, on which further proceedings were postponed and which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number 17, printed in House Report number 113-170, Offered by Mr. Nugent to Florida. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in favor of request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. Sufficient number having arisen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This is a two minute vote. Amendment voting continues here in the House. Congressional Quarterly writes that House GOP leaders may have wanted to restrict defense appropriations bill amendments related to the National Security Agency, Syria and Egypt, but it appears they have declared open season on programs supporting the war in Afghanistan. The House Rules Committee made an order, roughly 14 amendments to the appropriations measure, that would seek to provide less funding for the Afghan Security Forces Fund and the Af Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund. Some of the Afghan-related amendments are focused on deficit reduction, while others seek to shift funds to other priorities. Uh, several of those amendments, the story says, would radically shift U.S. foreign policy priorities, making adoption unlikely. 
Four more amendment votes after this one. On this vote, the yeas are 93, the nays are 327, and the amendment's not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on amendment number 20, printed in House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler, on which further proceedings were postponed, on which the noes prevail by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number 20, printed in House Report number 113-170. Offered by Mr. Nadler of New York. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in favor request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. A sufficient number having arisen, the recorded vote is ordered. Members, members record their vote by electronic device. This is a two minute vote. Members voting now on an amendment offered by Representative Nadler of New York. It would cut $70 million set aside to build a missile defense site on the East Coast. The Hill writes that Obamacare is at the center of a rapidly escalating fight that threatens to shut the government down this fall. Senate Republicans, including two members of the leadership, are coalescing around a proposal to block any government funding resolution that includes money for implementing the 2010 Affordable Care Act. And here in the House, 64 Republicans have signed on to a letter pressing Speaker Boehner not to bring any legislation funding Obamacare to the floor.
On this vote, the yeas are 173, the nays are 249. The amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded bullet on amendment number 23, printed in House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Moran, on which further proceedings were postponed and on which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number 23, printed in House Report number 113-170, offered by Mr. Moran of Virginia. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in favor of in support of a request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. A sufficient number have been arisen. A recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their vote by electronic device. This is a two-minute vote. On this vote, the yeas are 175, the nays are 247, and the amendment is not agreed to. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on amendment number 25, printed in the House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Poe, on which further proceedings were postponed and on which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number 25, printed in House Report number 113-170, Offered by Mr. Poe of Texas. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in favor of request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. A sufficient number have been arisen. A recorded vote is ordered. Members record their vote by electronic device. This is a two minute vote. This amendment would cut U.S. funding to Pakistan by $600 million. One more vote in this series after this one. We covered a hearing today with the nominees to the National Labor Relations Board. A CQ roll call writes that Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee, the senior Republican on the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, and other GOP senators asked NLRB nominees Nancy Schiffer and Kent Hirozawa whether they would serve as independent arbiters as members of the board, given that they both have expressed pro-labor views in the past. 
We'll have that hearing for you on C-SPAN 2 tonight at 9.20 Eastern and anytime at cspan.org. On this vote, the yeas are 186 and the nays are 237. The amendment is not agreed to. Pursuant to clause, eight, clause 6 of Rule 18, proceedings will now resume on the following amendment printed in a House Report 113-170 on which further proceedings were postponed. Amendment number 27 by Mr. Wahlberg of Michigan. The unfinished business is a request for a recorded vote on amendment number 27 printed in a House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Wahlberg, on which further proceedings were postponed and on which the noes prevailed by voice vote. The clerk will redesignate the amendment. Amendment number 27, printed in House Report number 113-170, offered by Mr. Wahlberg of Michigan. A recorded vote has been requested. Those in favor of request for a recorded vote will rise and be counted. A sufficient number having arisen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members record their votes by electronic devices. This is a 15 minute vote. This is the last vote in this series. Up next, more amendment debate on the $512.5 billion defense funding bill, with votes expect, expected later tonight and tomorrow. Wanted to tell you again about our live coverage on C SPAN 3 tomorrow. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox will testify before a Senate subcommittee live at 10 a.m. Eastern. President Obama will speak live in Galesburg, Illinois at Knox College at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we'll also cover a panel from the Congressional Caucus on Black Men on the status of black males. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern, also live on C-SPAN 3.
As this vote continues, an update on what's happening on Washington Journal tomorrow morning. A discussion on the implementation of the Affordable Care Act uh, with Representative Jim McDermott. He's the top Democrat on the Ways and Means Subcommittee on Health. Then uh, Congressman Bill Cassidy of Louisiana talks about his bill blocking the EPA from enforcing rules deemed to adversely affect the economy. We'll also have part of our Spotlight on Magazine series featuring Joe Papalardo of Popular Mechanics talking about the cover story about the future technology of war and how the Marine Corps is preparing. As always, uh, Washington Journal is every morning here on C-SPAN starting at 7 Eastern. Up next in the House, members will continue debating amendments to the Pentagon spending bill. The legislation proposes $512 billion in base military spending, $3.4 billion less than the Obama administration is requesting. Senator John McCain has said today that he will not block General Barton Dempsey's nomination for a second term as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he expects him to be approved by the Senate Armed Services Committee. Politico writes that McCain's comments came a day after Armed Services Committee Chairman Carl Levin released a letter from Dempsey outlining the high costs and heavy risks associated with a major U.S. intervention in Syria. Senator McCain had said he planned to block Dempsey's reconfirmation after the general declined to give his personal views on possible U.S. military intervention in Syria.
every member voted? Does any member wish to change his or her vote? On this amendment, the yeas are 283, the nays are 139, the amendment is agreed to. For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? Mr. Chairman, I move that the committee do not rise. The question is on the motion that the committee do not rise. As many as are in favor will signify by saying aye. Those opposed will say no. In the opinion, Chair, the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Accordingly, the committee rises. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Speaker, the committee of the whole House on the State of the Union has had in consideration H.R. 2397 directs me to report that it has come to no resolution thereon. The chair of the committee of the whole House on the State of the Union reports that the committee has had under consideration H.R. 2397 and has come to no resolution thereon. For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana rise? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I present a privileged report for printing under the rule. The clerk will report the title. Report to accompany H.R. 2792, a bill making appropriations for the legislative branch for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2014, and for other purposes. Referred to union calendar and ordered printed pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 21, points of the order are revised. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I send to the desk a privileged report from the Committee on Rules for filing under the rule. The clerk will report the title. Report to accompany House Resolution 315, resolution providing for consideration of the bill H.R. 2218 to amend Subtitle D of the Solid Waste Disposal Act to encourage recovery and beneficial use of coal combustion residuals and establish requirements for the proper management and disposal of coal combustion residuals that are protective of human health and the environment and providing for consideration of the bill H.R. 1582 to protect consumers by prohibiting the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency from promulgating as final certain energy related rules that are estimated to cost more than $1 billion and will cause significant adverse effects to the economy. Referred to the House calendar and ordered printed. Pursuant to House Resolution 312 and Rule 18, the Chair declares the House in the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union for further consideration of H.R. 2397. Will the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, kindly resume the Chair? The House is in the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union for the further consideration of H.R. 2397, which the Clerk will report by title. A bill making appropriations for the Department of Defense for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2014, and for other purposes. When the Committee of the Whole rose earlier today, Amendment Number 27, printed in House Report 113-170, offered by the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Wahlberg, had been disposed of. What purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? Mr. Chairman, pursuant to House Resolution 312, I offer amendments on block. The clerk will designate the amendments on block. For three, consisting of amendments numbered 31, 68, and 85, printed in House Report number 113-170, offered by Mr. Young of Florida. Pursuant to House Resolution 3112, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Young, and the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Viscoskley, will each control 10 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Mr. Chairman, I have no request for time, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentleman from Indiana. Uh, I would, uh, at this point in time, recognize Mr. Murphy for three minutes. A couple of minutes. Uh, two minutes. The gentleman from uh, Florida is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to thank the chair from the great state of Florida and the ranking member for their work putting together this bipartisan legislation. 
I rise today in support of the end block that includes my bipartisan amendment to the defense appropriations bill with the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Kaufman. Our amendment would eliminate wasteful spending on unused facilities, which could save tens of millions of dollars in fiscal year 2014 alone. The Department of Defense has hundreds, possibly thousands, of buildings and structures that it has rated at zero percent utilization. This is an incredible number of useless facilities the Department of Defense is paying to maintain. Federal agencies as a whole must do a better job at managing their facilities. Taxpayers cannot continue paying for unused and underused buildings while the nation is at record levels of debt. That is not good government and that is not smart spending. That is why earlier this year I introduced the SAVE Act to root out up to $200 billion in wasteful and duplicative government spending over the next 10 years. This amendment is an extension of one of the 11 common sense solutions included in the Bipartisan SAVE Act, preventing the Department of Defense from spending money on facilities that the Department itself has rated at 0% utilization. Mr. Chair, we all agree that we must rein in government spending, and the best place to start is by rooting out waste. My amendment is a common sense solution to do just that, and I urge my colleagues to support this bipartisan amendment. I yield the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back his time. The uh, gentleman from uh, Florida has yielded back his time. The gentleman from Indiana. I yield the balance back to the ranking yeah. member. Yeah. Gentleman from Indiana is. Gentleman from Florida has. The gentleman from Florida has yielded back his time. The gentleman uh, from Indiana. I would at this point yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman from Illinois. The gentleman from Rhode Island. Rhode, is I Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Thank goodness. The gentleman from Rhode Island is recognized. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thank the Chairman and the Ranking Member uh, for this bipartisan en bloc amendment and rise in support of my amendment that would better ensure that we meet the urgent mental health needs and addiction treatment needs of military personnel returning from Afghanistan. <clears throat> After more than a decade of war, many of our heroes are returning home from several tours of duty in Afghanistan and Iraq. To honor their service, we have the responsibility of ensuring that we develop treatments to address the specific health needs of our returning veterans. This year, as our troops return home to their families and loved ones, Congress should be increasing investments in the research that will help us better understand how to provide these veterans with the care they need and deserve. Early indications and analysis suggest the need to focus our efforts on psychological health and substance abuse. <clears throat> Importantly, in many cases, our returning veterans suffer from both mental health and substance abuse disorders simultaneously. Delivering health care to these patients is exceedingly difficult, but it's our responsibility to address this critical health need among our nation's heroes. And I want to compliment the chairman and the ranking member because this legislation contains important investments in peer-reviewed traumatic brain injury and psychological health research programs. To, but, but I believe that we have the means and the ability to do more. As this health need grows more acute and as more veterans return home, we should be increasing these investments. That's why this amendment would increase funding for psychological health research by $13 million and substance abuse research by a million dollars. To pay for these increases, my amendment would slightly reduce the increase in funding for the Afghanistan Security Forces Fund by $60 million, a modest decrease of a total allocation of $7.7 .7 billion. My amendment would shift a small fraction of this increased funding, reducing the total allocation by less than 1% in order to provide a small increase in funding for critical health research for our veterans and returning military personnel here at home. I thank the ranking member and the chairman for including this en bloc amendment and I yield back. Yeah. I apologize to the gentleman. I knew his state was on water. Uh, and I would yield back my time. The gentleman yields back his time. Does the gentleman from Arkansas claim the announced consent to claim the time from Mr. Young of Florida? Uh, that is correct. The gentleman is recognized. And Mr. Chairman, we have no, uh, no speakers, so we uh, yield back our time. Yield back your time. The question then is on the amendment on block offered by the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Young. As many as are in favor will signify by saying aye. Those opposed will say no. In the opinion chair, the ayes have it, the ayes have it and amendments on block are agreed to. It is now in order to consider amendment number 28, printed in the House Report 113-170. Uh, report For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I first ask unanimous consent to modify the amendment to reflect a reduction of $200 million on both uh, pages 131 and 157 to reflect uh, 
the amendment was, which is just passed, that reduced the account by $79 million. The, the, amend, the gentleman must first offer the amendment before he can amend it. So does the, the amendment, does the well, gentleman yes, have, amendment? have an amendment? At the, desk. the clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 28, printed in House Report number 113-170, offered by Mr. Mr. Chairman. Cicilline of Rhode Island. Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from uh, Arkansas. I, I reserve the right to object. Uh, this, let him make his um, amendment, and then we'll do that. The gentleman, I understand, has, uh, is asking unanimous consent for uh, an amendment yes, to the Mr. amendment. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm asking unanimous consent to modify the amendment to reflect the figures of $200 million as the reduction in the Afghan Cent infrastructure fund. Object. Because of the passage of the amendment we Objection. just passed. Objection is heard. The gentleman from Rhode Island is recognized for five minutes on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise today to offer an amendment that would shift funding away from the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund in order to reduce our deficit and focus on investing here at home. This bill appropriates $270 million to the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund over the next year. This fund is notorious for its inefficiency. Several government watchdogs, including the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, have repeatedly found that projects funded through the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund are hopelessly behind schedule, lack proper oversight, and are poorly administered. One example, the Kandahar Bridging Solution Project, which was developed to help provide electricity to a troubled region in Afghanistan, went 20 percent over budget in its first year of development, costing $8 million more than planned. Even with these cost overruns, the anticipated gains from this project are in serious jeopardy because of the slow pace of construction of related infrastructure that are essential to the region's long-term electricity needs. The failure to complete this project has led to higher fuel costs borne by the American taxpayer and raises serious questions about Afghanistan's ability to sustain electricity production in the future because of these high costs. The original intent of the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund was to identify a small group of infrastructure projects in 2011 that were shovel ready and capable of being completed by the middle of 2013. The Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund was never meant to last beyond the completion of these seven projects or into the fiscal year 2014. And yet here we are, once again appropriating hundreds of millions of dollars for projects that remain stalled and ineffective. Meanwhile, we're making major cuts in critical domestic funding here at home and doing almost nothing to rebuild the crumbling infrastructure in our own country. Congress has appropriated more than $1.1 billion over the last three fiscal years for the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund. And this bill would commit another $279 million in fiscal year 2014, despite the release of a Special Inspector General report indicating five of seven projects remained six to 15 months behind schedule. The same report also concluded that, and I quote, Congress and the U.S. taxpayers do not have reasonable assurance, end quote, that projects completed using AIF funds would be sustained or made viable by the Afghan government after we leave. This is increasingly disconcerting when we consider that only about 10 percent of the $400 million appropriated in fiscal year 2012 has been dispersed as of April of 2013, with another $325 million of taxpayer money from the current year appropriations remaining unspent. So we know the money is not being sent out as quickly enough to accomplish the original intent of the program to complete infrastructure projects by the middle of 2013. And we know that even if we were to complete these expensive projects, that they will likely not be maintained by the people of Afghanistan after our withdrawal. Knowing these facts, why should we provide an additional $279 million to this fund for next year? That is the definition of throwing good money after bad. Of course, it's also useful to remember the context in which we're spending the additional money on Afghanistan's infrastructure. These are incredibly difficult fiscal times here in our own country. Earlier today, we passed a rule for consideration of legislation that makes deep cuts to investments in domestic transportation and infrastructure. It eliminates the TIGER program to fund local transportation programs. It zeroes out our investments in high-speed rail and decreases funding to upgrade our airports and other FAA facilities by more than $500 million. Does this Congress really believe it's more important to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in Afghanistan's infrastructure when we're cutting those same investments in our own roads, bridges, airports, and transportation systems. Let's put America's needs first. 
My amendment reduces the deficit, eliminates the inefficient Afghanistan infrastructure fund, and allows us to refocus on building our own infrastructure here at home. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment and reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas rise? Claim time in opposition. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, this amendment will prevent the completion of the two most strategic initiatives funded by the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund, the Northeast and Southeast Power Systems, and limit the lasting counterinsurgency effects intended by the AIF program. Available, reliable power promotes jobs and economic development, which increases stability and reduces insurgency and insurgent influence. Mr. Chairman, Kandahar province has, uh, has been a primary focus for uh, AIF investment. Of all the areas in Afghanistan, none is more important to the future of the Afghan government or to the Taliban insurgency than this province, the Taliban's birthplace, location of its former capital, and spiritual heart. AIF projects support the build phase of the shape, clear, hold, build counterinsurgency strategy and are a critical component of the integrated civil military campaign that sets the conditions for Afghanistan's decade of transformation beyond 2014. Power distribution is currently provided through 12 provinces serving 10 million Afghans. And Mr. Chairman, let me just remind you that we just passed an amendment that already cuts this account by $79 million. This amendment cuts more funds than are left in the account. According to DOD, the lack of reliable electricity is the single greatest impediment to Afghanistan's economic growth and thereby the stability necessary to support drawdown and, trans and transition. Significant work on five of the seven power projects is in its beginning stages and is unlikely to be completed until well after the NATO mission ends in 2014. If project goals are set and not achieved, both the U.S. and Afghan governments can lose the populace's support. And it's for these reasons that we remain in uh, opposition uh, to the gentleman's amendment. And, Mr. Chairman, I would love to be able to yield uh, one minute to the ranking member. I appreciate the gentleman for yielding and would associate myself with his comments. Uh, I do appreciate the gentleman's concern and the monies uh, spent in Afghanistan ought to be spent carefully and efficiently, and we ought to have an investment made for those expenditures. But I harken back to the last debate we had when we did abandon this country in 1989, and as a result, that region of the world gave us the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. I don't want to take that type of chance. And simply because we have failed ourselves in this country by a failure to invest in our infrastructure, I do not believe this is the time to fail the Afghan people and do associate myself with the gentleman's remark and uh, am opposed to the amendment. I appreciate the gentleman from the Mr. Chairman, I reserve. The gentleman from Arkansas reserves his time. The gentleman from Rhode Island has 45 seconds remaining. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I would just say that the argument that uh, we owe it to the Afghan people to ensure that we rebuild their economy. We owe that responsibly first to the American people. We have a crumbling infrastructure in this country. Our roads, our bridges, our ports, our transit systems. Every economist I know says that investing in infrastructure so that we can move goods and services to get information and uh, uh, good service and information in this competitive 21st century economy is critical. And I hardly believe, with all due respect, that giving $1.1 billion, where only a little over $100 million has actually been spent, uh, that that is abandoning Afghanistan. This is $1.1 billion of taxpayer money. Only $111 million has been spent, and we're now appropriating another uh, $279 million. Uh, I don't believe we're abandoning anybody. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. And the time the gentleman has expired. The gentleman from Arkansas. We have no further uh, speakers, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back his time. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Rhode Island. As many as are in favor will signify by saying aye. Those opposed will say no. no. Pain the chair, the noes have it. Mr. No Chairman, ask for a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Rhode Island will be postponed. It is now in order to consider Amendment Number 29, printed in House Report 113-170. What purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of my amendment. I have this amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 29, printed in House Report number 113-170, offered by Mr. Cohen of Tennessee.
Pursuant to House Resolution 312, the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Cohen, and a member opposed will each control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Tennessee. Thank you, sir. This, this amendment, which was originally drawn, was like the amendment I offered last year that passed with a pretty strong majority, and it halves the Afghanistan Infrastructure Fund. Now, Mr. Wahlberg and I were co-sponsors in a bipartisan amendment that passed that cut $79 million. To get this amendment to the same point, we'd have to amend it down uh, $60 million, I believe, or to, to get it to, from the 279 uh, to the, the cuts. And I don't know if we want to do an amendment or not. It's, uh, to, is, if, the more money it takes it from me is fine, but if we wanted to half it. Is the amendment all right? I have to offer an amendment to reflect uh, the cut not to be uh, of amount of 139, but to take into consideration the 79, and so to make this amendment only $60 million. The gentleman from Tennessee controls the time. So I'd like to offer an amendment to the amendment to make this amendment reflect a $60 million cut to make the total cut 130, 139, which would be a half. The, um, the, chair, the chair, this is the gentleman from Tennessee asking unanimous consent to modify the, uh, his amendment. That's exactly what I did. Is there objection? Objection is heard. The gentleman from Tennessee is recognized. Well, that's probably, thank you, Mr. Speaker. That's just better because the, really this, this amendment is kind of a compromise between the amendment Mr. Wahlberg and I had and Mr. Cicilline's. Mr. Cicilline's cut the fund entirely. This cuts it in half. And a little more than half is really better. The fact is, yes, we need the infrastructure here in America, but we spent a lot of money on the infrastructure fund in Iraq, and we know from experience that most of that, a lot of that money, if not most of it, was stolen and wasted. And the same things happened in Afghanistan. The Inspector General has reported it, and in fact, Afghani officials have reported it. They do not have the expertise, nor do they have the, the abilities to maintain products after they're built. When the roads are constructed, they can't maintain them. So it's throwing money away. The same thing happened with air conditioners and other products that we gave the Iraqis and we've given the, the Afghanis. They cannot maintain them. And they can't maintain them when they do construct them, but before that, half of it's ripped off and graft. There are rankings of the most corrupt countries on the face of the earth, and Afghanistan is always number one or number two, and continues to be. And no matter how long we stay there and how long we've been there, the level of corruption has remained right at the top. That's not going to change. Giving this money away is basically encouraging and endorsing and seconding corruption and graft that we have seen in Afghanistan over the years and waste. This Congress should not be passing funds that we know are going to be corruptly going to officials who are putting it in their pockets, not helping the Afghani people. In a perfect world, I wouldn't offer the amendment. In a perfect world, I would say, oh, Charlie Wilson, what a great movie. What a great story. We pulled out too soon. Well, Charlie Wilson was right in theory. He was wrong in application because they steal and it's corrupt and they cannot maintain. We couldn't have put enough money and enough people. You have to change the ethics. I've heard a lot of people here on this floor talk about situations in America and they say, we can't do it. It's got to be the family do it. Well, talk about the family. The whole country is corrupt. They have stolen and stolen and stolen American dollars. They are, we're throwing them away, and we need to stop it. And it should be a place, just as the Wahlberg, Cohen, S.D. Regal Amendment passed, that this amendment passes so that we limit the amount of money that's at risk, and we save this money for the American taxpayer. We put the money into deficit reduction. The next generation doesn't have to pay for the corruption of the Afghani officials and the waste of Afghanistan with the inability to maintain the projects that they finally might get squeezed out after they steal as much as they can. We should not be funding this. So I would ask that we approve our amendment in the name of fiscal austerity, deficit reduction, anti-corruption, and just plain old good old common sense. Why, we might as well just have a bonfire and burn this money up before it goes over there because it's not going to work. In theory, it's great. But in reality, it doesn't work. And when you, the definition of insanity is expecting something different when you do the same thing over and over and over and you get the same result and you keep doing it. 
So, so this Congress, which has less than 10 percent popularity right now, doesn't pass an insane amendment to give money to corruption and to waste, I ask you to approve this amendment. And I reserve the balance. The gentleman reserves his time. What purpose is the gentleman from Arkansas? To claim time in opposition. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, let's, re let's remind ourselves the Afghan uh, infrastructure fund is aimed at providing water, power, and transportation projects, and more recently to increase the electricity supply throughout, but specifically in southern Afghanistan, to light shops and power factories and to construct provincial justice centers around the country. And it is clear that remaining projects could take 12 to 24 months to complete. And a lot of work has already taken place, in particular on the seven power projects in its beginning stages. And as I said in the previous amendment, unlikely to be completed until well after the NATO mission ends in 2014. And if these goals are not met, uh, then a lot of uh, great investment and a lot of good work will have uh, gone for naught. Uh, so we remain in opposition to the gentleman's amendment. And uh, if the ranking member would like uh, to speak on behalf, uh, then uh, I'd be happy to yield him a minute. I appreciate the gentleman for yielding and uh, simply would take a bit of a different tack. I do appreciate the gentleman's outrage uh, over any act of corruption, uh, whether it's in the country of Afghanistan or whether it's in the United States of America. Yeah. Uh, and we do have a responsibility to make sure these monies are spent for the intended purposes. But there's an insinuation that all expenditures in Afghanistan today are subject to corruption. Uh, I doubt there's a congressional district in this country that has not had at some point in time a public official sent to federal prison for public corruption. We then find people in our individual districts who are honest, law-abiding, and who make the necessary investments, and I'm certain that the overwhelming number of people in Afghanistan and their government, as with the United States, are of that ilk. And those are the people we ought to assiduously make sure get this money, and for that reason would be opposed to the amendment and appreciate the gentleman yielding. Chairman, we reserve. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentleman from Tennessee How is recognized. How much time do I have? I was just going to